A pivot table is a great way to summarize data. And here we've got the last three months of one year and the first three of the next, showing total product sales at each date. If I'd like to see how those sales accumulate over this time period, I can add a running total to the pivot table. So right now we've got the sum of units, and I'm going to add that field to the pivot table again in the adjacent column. So in the field list, here's units, and I'm going to drag that down into the values area below the existing sum of units. It gets a default title of sum of units 2. I'm going to use this for a running total, so I'll change that heading to RT for running total. To change the numbers, I'm going to right click on one of them, go to show values as, and click running total in. You have to select a base field, and we want to accumulate those totals down the list of dates, so the date is the correct base field, and I'll click OK. So now we can see how those numbers grow from the beginning date to the end, and these two amounts are the same. The running total works very nicely, as long as there's a string of dates down this column. But if we try and break things out by year and month, then we get some problems with the running total. So I'm going to right-click on one of the dates and click Group. And instead of showing each date, I'd like to get a monthly total. To do that, I'll break it into months and years in the grouping. Click OK. So there's 2012 in the last three months, 2013, and then we get January to March. Because we changed that date field, our running total has just removed that calculation that we put in. It didn't give us a warning of any kind, it just removed the calculation. We can see the numbers are the same all the way down. And if I right click and go to show values as, you can see that it's currently no calculation. If I go back to running total in and select date, it gives me a running total, but it stops at the year end because of the grouping and then starts again in January. So if you need to show the running total across the years, you'll have to use a workaround. So for this, I'm going to ungroup, and we're just back at our dates. If I go to the source data that is used for this pivot table, I can see the date, product, and units columns. I'm going to add a new column that will calculate a year and month for each date. So I'll click on the heading for column C, right click and insert to put in a new column, and I'll call this YRMTH for year month. In this cell, I'm going to use the text function to format the date as a four digit year, a dash, and a two digit month. So equals text, open bracket, the value that I want to format is this date, so I'll click on it, and it shows the field name here because I've used an Excel table in the data source, comma, and how I want to format it, I have to put that in quote marks, so quote, I want four digit year, a dash, and a two digit month, double quote, close the bracket, and press enter. And again, because this is a table, it fills that formula down automatically. So now we can see all the October dates are 2012-10. So we'll be able to summarize all of those just as we did when we grouped by year and month. So going back to the pivot table, I'll refresh, so right click and refresh. I'm going to go to the field list and put the year month into the rows area and I'll drag the date out. So there's the year month. We can see the sum for each month, and the running total has to be fixed again because it took out that calculation. So right click, show values as, running total in, and this time we want the base to be that year month. Click OK, and now we can see the running total goes right down from October 2012 to March 2013 without any break at the year end. So with a workaround, you can summarize things by year and month without interrupting the running total. For more Excel tips and tutorials, and to download the sample file for this video, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.